From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. James, how are you today? I'm glad that we're back for an episode uh, where you and I are just going to chat for a bit. It's great when we have guests, Steve, uh, but also I enjoy when we get to uh, just dive into a topic and uh, talk about it between us two. Absolutely. We're, if you haven't uh, listened to a couple of our past episodes, we've been fortunate to have uh, some some really great guests lately. So uh, please check those out. Um, we've had uh, probably um, four guests in the last uh, few months. So uh, check out those uh, those episodes. And if you want to be a guest, there's, we always have the door open. So please reach out to us and let us know. Uh, but for today, um, both you and I uh, have had dialogue about uh, the fact that we're in management roles and we we have people that work with us, for us, and that we're responsible for. And, and part of being responsible for people is that you have to help them to succeed. And um, a lot of times you have to train them. Sometimes you have to train them from the ground up. Sometimes you have to train them to do things the way you do them. And sometimes it's somewhere meeting in the middle where you have to get uh, used to working with somebody and and see how to uh, best leverage their skills to to your environment and your needs. So um, James, I, I know that training is uh, a powerful thing, but it doesn't come with uh, without some some challenges. So um, share a little bit maybe about things that you've learned um, while, while you've trained some people, a couple of things maybe that you didn't know going in or that were surprising. Um, so that's a definitely a good question. Um, I would say part of saying whip training is really coming to the re realization. Like we all know this, but actually knowing it is not everyone's going to tackle a problem the way you do. Not everyone's going to gravitate to the way you do things. Um, like I, you know, I come in, I, I'm, I use a hashtag always be learning. I'm taking webinars. I'm jumping on podcasts. I'm hitting training things. And then you sit there and be like, well, why isn't everyone else doing this? And it doesn't mean what they're doing is wrong, What, but that's not how they go about doing it. And so I kind of chop it up, like, especially in management, it's like, you can drag a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. Um, same with training. You can send out all the training you want to your team, but if they don't want to take that training, they're going to regret only take it because, you know, the boss is telling them to do it, but doesn't mean they're actually processing the information not and understanding and can apply it to what they're trying to do. So I would say that's probably the hardest thing I'm having as a manager is getting the team excited for the training. Like I love training. Like I'll jump at any opportunity to take training, but I'm not at the point where I should not be taking training. My team should be taking it. And I'm sitting there like throwing things at them and, and I'm thinking like, okay, is it sensory overload for that? Are they getting the material? Are they understanding the material? Or do they just, you know, not want to go for that? Maybe they don't like webinars. Maybe they don't like to do it uh, virtual. Maybe they want the hands-on. So that's really um, something I've been kind of pumping the brakes on and diving more into. Yeah, I, th I think you touched on a lot of good things there because you know, one of them is management versus training. So some of it is trying to set those guardrails and get people to understand what their role entails and what what's expected of them. And, and part of that is training. And then the other is the, the knowledge that they have to gain. And, and specifically, uh, because we're talking about ask the programmer technical knowledge. Um, but then, like you said, do you know what to do with that knowledge once you've gained it? And it, I get all the time from my team it's great that you're giving us the opportunity to learn something, but if we're not applying it, we're likely not going to retain it for very long. And then you have to relearn it again. So I think that's to, to your point, um, sitting through and getting all the information 
sometimes can backfire because you're using time and then it's not going to necessarily sink in or, or be absorbed. And you, you're really not um, raising the, uh, the baseline of knowledge because they're going to have to relearn it if they haven't used it. Oh, definitely. Um, it's the whole notion. If you, 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 like you said, if you're not using it, you're going to lose it because our one, our brains are very complicated. We all know that. Uh, but we can only have so much in our work and memory at one given time. So if we're not using a skill or anything like that, our brains is pushing it to the side or maybe even forgetting about it to make room for things that they do need and do uh, use daily. So, yeah, you got to definitely be using it. Um, so the training should coincide with stuff that your team's doing daily. It, have you found that you've been able to learn through the eyes of your team? So sometimes um, training is also beneficial to some the the others, uh, like the I guess a manager or 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 supervisor, because they don't realize what their team doesn't know, perhaps, or maybe they don't realize the perception that their team has or the, or, or maybe the, they, they assume that they know something that they don't necessarily know, or, or we, we tend to get blind spots because we have been doing this for a long time and it's second nature. And a lot of times it's hard to know how to pass that information down without feeling like you're bringing it down to too fundamental of a level and, and then maybe um, it isn't received well because you, you don't want to seem like you have to take it down and baby somebody, if you will. Yeah, I would say I, there's a couple to unpack there. That's one thing I'm starting to notice now. Like there's been a couple training sessions that I've, had my team go through um that i was able to kind of be that fly in the wall like i was in the room i knew what was going on but it was training that probably wouldn't have beneficial me because my skill level is higher than that training uh because of my experience and things i was doing so i could actually not just take in the information that the instructor was giving, but also see how my team was digesting that information. Um, some of them was they need to do the steps a couple times before they actually understood it, where others like they need the verbal or they need it to be shown. Like uh, that helps me as a manager to go, okay, when I'm talking to a team member and about training, this is how they need that information. Um, uh, so they can unpack it because, like you said, see, you and I, we've been around this long enough. Probably our listeners, uh, been around long enough that sometimes we skip over the steps because we were like, "Oh, you should know this." Um, but we got to get that bias out of our minds, uh, that um training bias that that oh, you you already know this. Let's skip over it. Well, maybe they don't. Or maybe they just need that refresher because it's not something they do daily, so it's not in their work memory. Yeah, I I like that, and I I, I would also add to um, being able to mix the training from an outside source and also having internal training because, like you said, when you're in it with them, you get to know them better. You get get they get to know you better. You have um uh, uh, you, I think you learn a lot by uh, being able to experience something with your team, even if it's something you already know. The um, Oh, yeah, the, the, the valuable. The, um, just that connection. It's like, you know, we're going through the, the floodwaters together. Um, yeah, maybe I'm more prepared to go for the floodwaters because of my years of experience and all that stuff. But it's still that we're still all going through it. Um, and you kind of build that bond, like you said, with the training, even if it may not be fully beneficial to you, but you're watching your teammates or your team grab that information. And then it helps you offset what 
they need to know. I'll shift gears just a little bit because I know that this is something that that you'll like is that we also want to make sure that we don't get stuck in there's only one way of doing things and in old ways of thinking. And and I, I really do believe in the episode that I, I got to record with Brittany DeCessory. We talked a little bit about mentorship and we talked about the fact that when she learns from me, I also learn from her and that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of value in that. And have you experienced that where you, you're getting to learn from your team, even though you, you probably have a lot more, um, you, you, you have, you have a lot more knowledge and experience, but, but they, they bring things to the table that are either fresh ways of thinking or approaching a problem differently or, or even having different experiences being at, at, a, at a different age? Oh, all of above. Yes, I have definitely gotten information from my team members uh, from, you know, just their years of experience, the different experience they had, their youth, their age, all that stuff. They look at something different. Um, they'll question it. Like, we, we tend to get blinders on when we do things, cause we know how to do them. Uh, we do them our way. We get it done right. Let me rephrase that. We get it done the way we do it and move forward. But the way we do things doesn't always mean it's the best way or the only way of doing things. It worked for us, may not work for everyone. And having an outside person who might come in and go, well, why are you doing it that way? Or, about doing it this way allows you to break the monopoly, uh, the the mundane thing. Uh, I actually heard this on a leadership podcast, and it was very interesting enough to think about. It, is we all because our brains? And I, I know I'm hampering on the brain stuff, but this kind of goes with training too. Is um, and I'll I'll tie it together in a moment. Is we get into our routines. So the best way to break your routines is to move. And the way the the guest on the podcast was talking about it was without even thinking about it, every night when you're at home and you're brushing your teeth, you brush your teeth exactly the same way, same order. But when you travel, you change it up. Even though uh, always a different environment. So I tried to do that as well when I'm doing my training. This is where I'm talking to tie in is I'll pick different rooms or try to different uh, ways of doing. Maybe it's a lunch and learn, or maybe it's a webinar, or maybe it's hands on. I try to mix it up. So one, you're hitting everyone's modality to learn, but also, you know, you're not in the same what? Oh, we're in the same room. We're going for the same motion. You break it up a little more. Yeah. I I, I also think that there's value in um, learning from people who have just learned it right in front of you if you have that opportunity. So if you teach somebody, have them teach the next person because that'll help them to reinforce and the next person will get to learn it um, similarly to the way that person learned it. And th there may be a, a, a little bit more effectiveness there. But, but we, um, we, we're try, we try to um, institute that here as much as possible in my company, um, where, where part of advancing is being able to help the next person behind you move into your role or be able to help groom somebody for the position that's behind you. So it's um it's a similar thing of um you're you're learning from different people who have different styles, but but I, I think what you said is really important is that you know that don't get locked into to um one routine because it, it, you tend to uh either get too comfortable or you you might not realize the blind spots that you're missing or the the value in doing something another way that that may may be uh more effective but you just haven't tried it yeah and as mike tyson always say everyone has a plan to they get punched in the face 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, a, a, as we wrap this one up, um, I, I think the uh, you know the the audience would benefit from any tips that you could provide um, for somebody who is trying to learn or who who is trying to help somebody else learn. You know, anything come to mind? So. Oh. If you're in this seat, a situation where you're trying to train your team or uh, pass knowledge, is it's hard, but get out of your bias. Stop having people is assuming they know things that they may not know. Let them ask questions and, you know, let them fail. As long as it's not going to impact operation, like a client or, in my case, classrooms and so let them fail because then they can learn from that failure. It's how you recover from the failure. Um, and again, you might find a new way of doing things. Um, it may not be the way you're doing it. So let them experiment, let them push the envelope and build their toolbox. Now, flip side, if you're someone who is trying to learn and want to play, get out there and make mistakes. You are going to fail. That's how you're going to learn. That's how you build. It's how you recover from your failures. Um, I I tell my team this. I've always done this. Is if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. Again, you need to push the envelopes. You need to learn and get in there and try things and make sure. Okay, you make a mistake. You learn to fix it. That's how I got into computers. I I was actually very afraid to touch a computer like the insides and all that stuff and i had a friend this was i was in high school friend told me you get in there and mess around if you mess something up you learn not to do that and you learn how to fix it those are really really good points that i think could yeah. be applied to anything that you're learning I, th thank you for sharing that th those are really good i i i um the, the only thing that i would add is that if you're um, learning something, like we said before, maybe get an exercise to try and apply it and, um, and, and, and see how you do with that. Um, I, I've also thought about different ways of being able to e either gamify or make it seem like you're having levels of achievement. I, you know, I, I always like the, um, the idea of like martial arts where they have different belts and different levels that you can gain. And that, that, that also gives you something to work toward so that you realize your, your, your learning is, is you're, you're able to see the progress. And I think that that's really important too. Um, and, and, um, but, but I think what, what you said is really important. So that I, um, I, I would, I would stick with your tips there. And I like your tips. I mean, I'm, got the wheels moving now, even hearing what you're saying of how I can apply that. So definitely uh, good tips all around. Excellent. So um, please, uh, if you're out there listening, let us know what you think, how, what's worked for you for training. What do you recommend? What did you get from this episode? Um, we, we'd love to hear what you think and, and the feedback that you have and um, reach out to us and, and let us know. Um, James, how can people get in touch with you, learn what you're up to and keep the conversation going? Um, I'm on X as AB underscore James King. I'm on LinkedIn, not too active, but once in a while I'm on there. Uh, writer for the Higher Ed Digital Magazine, the IT and AB column, have my board member. Again, Google me, you'll find me. Excellent. And for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media. I am doing more on LinkedIn. So check that out as well. I'm also on X slash Twitter, um, especially on Sunday mornings where, where James and I uh, tend to chat on AV in the AM. So you can join and uh, be involved in that conversation there as well. But for us, uh, please uh, check us out on YouTube, on your favorite podcast player, send us uh, a review. Uh, give us a rating and let us know what you think and let us know that you're out there because that's the only way that we know you're listening. And if you're interested in being a guest, please reach out to us with that as well. And until next time, this has been Ask the Programmer.